All right, here we go. We've got our Linux virtual machine loaded up here, running Linux Mint 17.1, 64-bit with the uh, XFCE desktop. My personal favorite flavor of Linux. So the very first thing we need to do is download the source code for the Zifter wallet on Linux. Just open up our web browser. And we're going to navigate to www.ziftercoin.com. Here we go, the Ziftercoin homepage. Ziftercoin QT 1.0 for Linux. We're going to grab the 64 bit version of that file. And we're going to save that. to our computer. Great, now that we have that, we can open it up. All right, so we've downloaded the Ziftercoin wallet. We've got the uh, tar file right here. I'm going to go ahead and extract that. Into the folder, 64-bit, it's already compiled. Here's the Zifter coin wallet right here, Zifter coin dash QT. So we'll open a terminal. Dot slash Zifter coin QT. I prefer to do as much stuff with Linux from the command line as possible. It's just good practice, good habit to get into and learn your way around. use the default data directory. I tend to leave it there. It's home slash username slash dot ziftercoin. So we'll let that install to the default data directory. And there we go. Our ziftercoin wallet is loaded up. It is out of sync because we just installed it. Synchronizing with the network 11 days behind. That shouldn't take too long to catch up. But while we're waiting, a couple of quick things we want to do. Click on Settings, go to Options, start Ziftercoin on System Login. I have that activated, so my wallet is always running. Nothing we need to change there or there window. I prefer to check both of these. I like to have it minimize and close both directly down to the taskbar. I prefer to have it that way. All the other settings I tend to leave the same. Click OK. The other thing I like to do, always with your wallets, is encrypt them. Put in a good solid passphrase. To protect your wallet, and make sure you're the only one that has access to it. Pay a lot of attention to this warning box. If you lose your passphrase, you will lose your coins. They can't be recovered. Still, it's always safer to encrypt. And once you've encrypted the wallet, go back into your terminal, restart your wallet. It will load back up, and now down here in the bottom corner, you can see that the wallet is encrypted and locked. And you also see we've picked up six days, five days left. It's just reconnecting to the network. So that's pretty much it. The Zifter wallet is. Fairly straightforward, sending, receiving, transactions, but this part is really cool, and this how this is how easy it is to mine coins on Zifter. They've built it directly into the wallet for solar mining. All you do is open your wallet, come to the mining tab, set your max hash rate. So if you want to use half of your processor, leave it at 50. If you want to use all your processor, crank it up to 100. Anywhere you want, in and around there, you set your percentage of processing power you want to use. You can see the network hash rates right there and you just click start mining. Now of course you'll have to unlock your wallet for this process to begin. So put in your passphrase, unlock your wallet. We're only three days behind. And here we go. 
Your wallet is hashing. You are now mining Zifter coins. Now this virtual machine, I've only got it set to use two cores, so the hash rate is not very high, about 60 kilohash, which means there's going to be a lot of space time between my blocks. Now remember, blocks are completely random. There's, there's no guarantee that I'm going to get one in eight days or one day. It could be eight minutes. It could be eight days. It could be eight weeks, which is where pool mining has really taken off. There are several Zifter coin mining pools that have started up to allow us to mine coins on a pool and get a more regular income, and I'm going to cover most of those in another video. But what I just wanted to share with you now is how simple it is to get the Zifter coin wallet installed and start to mine with it. They did a great job with this client. So when you're finished mining, we can just click Stop Mining. Shuts it back down. Any coins we do mine will come directly into the wallet. Now, one tip you can do. Help. Debug window. Console. Set. Use. POK true. This enables proof of knowledge, which gives you a 5% bonus on any blocks that you do discover. Just a quick way to get a little bit of extra coin for your mining troubles. Now, you do have to enable set use POK every time you restart your Zifter wallet. It is not enabled by default on this version of the mining wallet. Now there is a new version of the wallet coming. It was posted on Reddit the other day. Um, they are going to include pool mining directly into the wallet. So once that comes out, I'll do another video laying that one out. In the meantime, you still have to use something like CPU Miner if you want to pool mine, and I'm going to cover that in my next video. But right now, there's a pretty good overview of the Zifter wallet, how to mine with it, how to get it installed and running on Linux, and again, that should work with every flavor of Linux, not just Mint. If you found this video useful, please click the like button down below. I really appreciate the support, and we'll see you right back here for the next one. Thanks for watching.